Greetings, physicists. This video will be talking about how to solve collisions, but how to solve collisions when you're dealing with energy considerations as well. So, we're looking at a couple train cars going to crash into each other. They're colliding head on. We have their masses, we have the velocities before the collision. And interestingly enough, they're asking about thermal energy, how much thermal energy is created in this collision. So we know right off the bat that this collision is not going to conserve kinetic energy or mechanical energy. Anyway, I'm going to draw this. Uh, helps me visualize things. So we've got a train car going this way on the track. And we got a train car going this way on the track. This one's uh, 2 times 10 to the 4th kilos. This is twice as much. Speeds are pretty close. This one's going at 1.5. This one's going at 1.1. And they hit and they stick together. So this is the before situation I just drew. Let me draw the after situation. <clears throat> Afterwards, it's basically one big train car, right? They have a little thing in front that sticks them together. And they're moving together. So this is the before, and this is the after. <laughs> well, there's a couple things we're going to have to do. We're going to have to solve it first using momentum so that we can get the speed of the after situation. And once we have the speed, we can calculate the kinetic energy, and then we can uh, compare that to the original kinetic energy to see how much was lost. Because whatever we lose turns into thermal energy in this collision. So, scroll here. Um, I'm going to do a collision formula here. We have, before the collision, there are two objects, M1V1 and M2V2. That's all the momentum that exists before the collision. After the collision, there's only one object, so I'll put a capital M, and there's only one velocity. And real quick, I need to go back and, and make a point that these guys are not going in the same direction. So I'm going to make the left direction the negative direction. So otherwise you will get this problem wrong. So when we plug stuff in, uh, I'm, I'm looking for the velocity after, so I'm going to divide by mass over here. Get rid of that. So I will have the mass of one car, which was 2 times 10 to the fourth, 2.0. Just keep that in mind, so for sig figs. Uh, and then that's kilograms times the velocity was 1.5 meters per second. Plus, on top, we had a mass of 4, 4.0, times 10 to the fourth kilograms times 1.1 meters per second. But that's negative, so let me go ahead and change that whole thing to be negative. Nah, I'll just put the negative here. Negative. There you go. Over, if I add them together, they both have the same power of 10, so I can just add them. So it's going to be 6.0 times 10 to the fourth kilograms. And that should give me my answer. Oh, look, I don't have to bother with the 10 to the fourth. It cancels. That is nice. 2 times 1.5 is 3, plus 4 times 1.1 is 4.4. But it's not plus, it's minus because that's negative. Over 6. And so, 3 minus 4.4 uh, is going to be minus 1.4 over 6. And I will do that in my calculator, because that's not a round number. 1.4 over 6. 0.23 repeated. But this is a two sig fig problem, so 0.23 meters per second. And it's a negative, right, because the negative wins in this case. So negative 0.23. What does that mean? Well, if I label that, if I go back up here, in this picture, that means it's going in the negative direction. So the, the, once they hit, they should be going left. And that should make sense, right? This guy was going not quite as fast, but he had twice as much mass, and he's not going less than half as fast, so he's going to win the, the collision, essentially. His momentum wins out. He had way more momentum. 
All right. So we now have that. So now what I'm going to compare, uh, essentially, before the collision, there was a certain amount of kinetic energy. There was one half m1 v1 squared plus one half m2 v2 squared. Energy is conserved, right? Mechanical energy is not, but total energy is. So after the collision, there should still be that same amount of energy. Well, what kind of energy is after? Well, there's the kinetic energy of the, the two of them together, one-half mv squared, plus some amount of thermal energy, which would be Q, would be mc delta t, but I'll go ahead and just label Q as thermal energy, which is typically how we write it. It doesn't matter. You can just put plus thermal energy if you want. It's a placeholder. Plus x if you want, if you're looking for an unknown. Uh, but now we know all of these things. We have the masses. We have the velocity after now. So we can plug all this in. And now we don't really have to worry about negatives because everything gets squared in terms of velocity. So I'm just going to go ahead and solve this. So what we will get, if I subtract this to the other side, I will get... Uh, I can't factor the halves out, so I have to do that. So half of... 2 times 10 to the 4th, and the velocity squared, it was 1 and a half squared, plus half of, again, 4 times 10 to the 4th, and 1.1 squared, minus, because I'm subtracting the other side, half of the mass was 6 times 10 to the 4th. It's getting scrunchy. I apologize for that. I'm going to have to scroll over, actually. Uh, and then his velocity squared, which was 0.23. And yes, the 0.23 is negative and the 1.1 is negative, but this, that will square out. Ugh. Okay, let's, let's put this in the calculator. This is not going to be pretty, so that's... Oh, I could probably just factor a, a 10 to the 4th out of all of these, can't I? So I'm just going to get some answer times 10 to the 4th, I believe. Yeah? Yeah, 10 to the 4th factors out. So I can do half of 2 times 1.5 squared plus half of 4 times 1.1 squared, yeah. And then just put 10 to the 4th to it. All right. That'll be easier for my calculator because my calculator doesn't like powers of 10. All right. So 1.5. plus half of 4 times 1.1 times 1.1 minus half of 6 times 0.23 times 0.23. And if I did that correctly, I got 4.5 times 10 to the 4th, and I'm going to round it to there because it goes 2 sixths. And that should be joules. So how much energy did we lose in this collision? It looks like we lost 45,000 joules as thermal energy. So there's a lot of heat associated with this. Uh, thermal energy can be a lot of things. It can be heat, which is primarily how we think about it. It could also be sound. So when these cars smash together, they can make a lot of a big noise. That is considered thermal energy. Um, and also, it can be changing the shape. So the the latch, I might be able to draw this, but probably not. Um, if you were to look straight down on the cars as they come in towards each other, there's like a, a latch that's like in a certain shape. And then there's another latch on the other side that has a specific shape. And then after they come together, they, it closes the latch. That takes a little bit of that energy. It probably doesn't take much. I would imagine most of it is heat. Uh, also, probably a lot of the energy goes through the frame uh, of, the, of the train cars. And, and some of it probably goes into the, into the rails and stuff. Anyway, that's thermal energy. Okay, so this is an inelastic collision. In fact, since they stick together, it's a perfectly inelastic collision. We don't expect it to conserve kinetic energy. And sure enough, this is how much kinetic energy we lost. Okay, on to the next one. There we are. Air hockey table. Love me some air hockey. And you've got a puck traveling one direction and hitting another puck. And 
This is a... These are the most annoying. We don't like these problems. I, I say that the most annoying mainly because they give you only the before condition and say, what is the after condition, even though there's two variables. So this becomes a system of two equations when you see something like this. Now, it has to be, based on that alone, you would have to say this is a perfectly elastic collision. Or rather, yeah, that's right. This is an el elastic collision. I don't think there's such a thing as perfect, but just elastic. So kinetic energy has to be conserved during this collision. So we'll draw this, the puck traveling here, hitting this one at rest. That'll make it a little easier. This is the before. And then after they hit, what is the final velocity of each puck? And they're identical, so they have the same mass. Uh, there are quick and easy ways to do this, which I will probably show you after, but let me go ahead and do it the long way so you can see it. I'm going to do the momentum equation first. M1V1 plus M2V2 equals, this is the before, M1V1 plus M2V2. That's the first equation, and by itself it will not get us what we need, but we also have the kinetic energy equation, which is half m1v1 squared plus half m2v2 squared. That's the before amount of energy, but because this has to be elastic, uh, we'll say that it, it will be conserved. So we can say the same thing on the other side. It will be equal to all the kinetic energy of the objects after. m1v1 squared plus half m2v2 squared. Okay. And so we'll have two system, two equations, but we'll also have two variables, which are the, the final velocities. All right. A couple things that make this easier is that this guy is not moving beforehand, so we can just drop those factors out. We can also divide out the half. That will go away, which will make this a little easier. So in my first equation, I have... Oh, oh, and, and something even better. Oh, I totally missed this the first time. They are identical pucks. I even, look at this, I did that. That makes this easy because I can divide the mass out because all the masses are the same, M1 and M2. Oh, thank you for doing that problem. Okay, so, so this really becomes a lot. V2, V1 equals V1 plus V2. Yeah, all right, well, let's do that. So if I've got V1, which was 2.3, 2.3 meters per second equals the final V1 plus the final V2. And down here, 2.3 meters per second, and that's a squared value, has to equal V1 squared plus V2 squared. So now we should be able to do a substitution here where I subtract v2 from both sides, and I'm going to get that v1 equals 2.3 minus v2, and I'm going to drop the meters per second. Everything's in meters and seconds. And then I can plug that in to here. So I'm going to get 2.3 squared equal to 2.3 minus v2 squared plus v2 squared. Hmm, I'm going to have to expand that polynomial. Let's, let's try it. What is getting here? Get out of the way. There we go. So that's a 2.3 minus v2 times a 2.3 minus v. v. Gosh, I cannot write tonight. And when I square that, I should get, let's see here, I'm going to get, well, 2.3 squared, that'll be the first thing, minus 2.3 V2, and also minus 2, so minus 4.6 V2 plus V2 squared plus v2 squared here, right? That's this one, 
equal to 2.3 squared. All right. That's a point there. Now I'm going to subtract this 2.3 squared from this one, and that's going to cancel both of them, and I'll get a 0 on this side equals negative 4.6 v2 plus 2 v2 squared. There we go. That's looking good. And then I'm going to add that, this one, I'm going to add that to the other side and get 4.6 v2 equals 2v2 squared, cancel the v2, divide by 2, and I get 2.3, this is meters per second, equal v2. Let's plug that in. So the, the final v2 is 2.3, so if I put that here, well 2.3 minus 2.3, so v1 has to be zero. Well that should fit. And so what I can really do here is go I'm gonna I'm gonna take and uh, erase that guy. So this is that situation I said there's an easier way to do this or there's a there's some things you can recognize. In elastic collisions between particles that have the same mass, identical pucks. Don't worry about the at rest part. But because those pucks have the same mass and they collide elastically, essentially what they do is they trade momentum. Or they, or sorry, they trade velocity. I think, I think it's also true, even if they don't have the same mass, they still wind up trading momentum. But if this guy started with uh, 2.3, this guy started with zero, then this guy starts with zero afterwards, or ends with zero, and this guy ends with 2.3. Um, specifically for elastic collisions between identical objects. And that will save you some time. And there's a mathematical proof for this, that, that it works for everything, but I, I'm not going to take the time to do it in this video. So, let's keep going. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Small ball with mass m is at rest. It is then struck by a ball with twice its mass that is moving with speed v. And we see the before and after below. Is this possible? Well, let's see. This, well, we don't know if this is an elastic collision, actually. We have to determine that. So we have a two mass here rolling forward, hitting this guy. So he has... 2mv of momentum. So this is 2 capital MV. Actually, they're both capital M, so that's fine. And this guy has zero momentum before. After the hit, he has zero momentum, and he has 2mv. So momentum is conserved in this collision, which is the number one priority. You have to conserve momentum. Now, kinetic energy doesn't have to be conserved. So let's look at kinetic energy here. Before the collision we have a 2, so it's going to be 1 half of 2m times v squared. Or just mv squared of kinetic energy, and he has zero kinetic energy. After the collision, he has zero kinetic energy, and this guy here has 1 half of m times 2v squared. And if I square that, I get a 4. So if I start here, I have half of 2mv squared. Here I'm going to have half of 4mv squared. Now I told you kinetic energy doesn't have to be conserved during a collision, but there is absolutely no way to wind up with more kinetic energy after a collision unless there was some outside force acting on them, in which case even momentum wouldn't be conserved. This is an impossible situation. You cannot create energy out of nowhere in a closed isolated system. So no, this is not possible. And the reason it's not possible uh, is because even though momentum was conserved, we created more kinetic energy than the system started with. Uh, and that, you can't create energy. Law of conservation of energy, people. Yeah, good problem. I like that one. And I think that's it. Okay, so hope this helps you to understand problems with uh, elastic and inelastic collisions.